Okay guys, so now that we've milled the lumber down, I need to start to build the pie lasters for the sides of that recessed panel wainscoting. This morning I went and I installed the base that I made on that video, if you haven't watched it, on making large beveled miter cuts. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. <clears throat> so right now, what we need to do is, since that base is installed, I need to get the pie lasters up because none of the walls are straight and plumb and level and everything is crooked, all the moldings that are already in there that I have to cover up. So what I'm gonna do is build both of the pie lasters, go and dry fit them in, make them all plumb, and then take a measurement on the inside so that I can get the perfect measurement for that recessed panel with the moldings that's gonna go in between, sit up against the wall. So the pie lasters are gonna be a total width of five and a half inches. So my side pieces need to be one and a half inches thick or wide. They need to be one and a half inches wide each side. And the center pieces that are gonna separate it and give me that little recessed part for the molding, that needs to be two and a half inches. So two and a half and one and a half and one and a half, it's five and a half in total. And so we're gonna cut those pieces now. I need a six inch long and two nine inch long blocks that are gonna be spaced out evenly on that pie lister. So I'm gonna times that by four because I'm making two pie lasters. All right, let's start the cut. Four pieces at one and a half, which is gonna give me a little more than six. And it needs to be 111 and 3 eighths long. So what I did was I cut it to 111 and a half so that I can square off one edge and mark off 111 and 3 eighths and cut it to the final dimensions. And then all four of the pieces will be exactly the same size. And that's gonna save me later from having to set up a stop lock. When I rip it down, they're already going to be the size that I need. So let's make the cuts. Okay, so now I have all equal lengths for the four pieces. That's gonna be two for each pie laster. And I have a two and a half inch piece here that's gotta get cut into six and nine inch blocks. So let's put that off to the side, just a minute here. And since this all came from the same board, what I'm going to do is to keep a matching grain pattern is this will be the two sides of one pie laster and this will be the other pie lister. And you can see, obviously, it's not the, the size it's gonna be, but what's gonna happen is the pie lister is gonna have the middle piece like that, kind of like a plinth block, and then the backer board will be behind the pie lister. That'll be a three-quarter inch piece of red oak, and that'll give it that recessed panel look. And then in between the opening here, it's going to be molding, and it just so happens that after I've cut that piece up and got my four pieces for the pie lasters sides, I have now a three-quarter inch wide by half inch thick piece that I can come down and make some molding out of because that is the size that I need. So it worked out perfect. I need to cut two blocks at nine inches, and my fence only allows me to do 13 with the stop because of the width of the fence and the miter saw itself sitting in between. So the easiest way to do this without having to measure a, you know, measure a, a four inch piece and then cut it and then put it here with the stop block, it's easier to just bring the blade down to hit your tape measure for nine, set up two blocks against the fence and then use your miter saw clamp to hold that stop block in place. Most of you have this. If you have a miter saw, hopefully you didn't lose it because it is, you know, relatively good tool to have. And we're dead on on the nine, so we're going to cut those now. Now 
Now you don't have to do this with dominoes. You can do it with biscuits or since it's not a structural uh, supporting piece, you can actually just use glue, but the dominoes or the biscuits, they help line it up. Okay, so now from the bottom to the middle of the pilaster, well, maybe about a quarter of the way up of the pilaster, there is another block in the middle, and it is 27 inches up from the top of this block to the bottom of this block. So what I did was kind of like a story stick, I cut a piece of scrap to 27 inches so that I can put that in there, butt it up against the piece right here, and I clamped it in place so it would stay flush even though the dominoes are in there, it's not gonna move, I don't wanna take a chance. And then I'm just gonna butt this middle piece up to it like that. And now when I go and make my lines, not only am I gonna have exactly where I want it, but now when I make the second pilaster, the face fronts for that is gonna be exactly in the same spot just by using that same story stick. So I'm going to put it up against there. Once I have it where I want it, I am just going to basically mark out where I want the dominoes. One spot. There's my second spot. You don't have to be crazy with the lines because you can always make the adjustment on the domino to make it a little loose fitting so you could slide it into place. Now I'll rip down the backer boards. Now to give you an idea of what I did here, this is the backing I was talking about and I cut it slightly oversized. The width of this is five and a half. I made this five and three quarters and what that's gonna do is give me a little overhang on all the sides and the top and the bottom. I cut it a little longer. So this is face of the pilaster. You can see that goes on just like that and that gives you your backing and the depth of the pilaster and that little bit of overhang that we're going to use a router with a flush trim bit and we're going to flush it all up and then it's going to be perfect. That's why I cut this oversized so there could be a perfect Actually, it'll be actually seamless when this gets glued together. So what I'm going to do is apply glue to the back of this piece. Then we're going to glue it down and tack nail it in from the front with some brads. And then we're going to actually screw it in through the back so that all the fasteners are invisible. And then we'll have less to fill and the sanding will be much easier. And then we'll flush trim everything up. Okay, now to maintain the uniform thickness of this, which is two and a half, I have a scrap cut off of the two and a half that I ripped before. I'm just gonna keep it in the middle because you see it wants to already start to move a little bit because the pieces are thin, they're only one and a half, so they, they tend to bow in or out a little bit. So if I put that in there, Now I'll flip it over and I'll just reinforce all three pieces together with the back of board with some one and a quarter inch screws.
And now it's over to the router table so I can make the trim moldings for the inside of the recessed panel. Okay guys, so I'll just give you a little close up here because these things barely fit in my shop and there's really no good angle that I can get these on while I talk to you. So I'm just gonna do it like this real quick off the tripod and show you how monstrous these things really are. And these are gonna be going on either side of the Memorial Wall build. These things are huge. All right, so let's get back on the tripod. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. All right, everybody. Well, as always, thanks for watching. I got these things back down on my miter station because that's the only place they fit right now until I deliver them to where they gotta go. And they are gonna be installed on either side of a recessed panel and uh, another recessed panel on the top, which is gonna have also an inlay, which is gonna be a different color, which is gonna be like a dark walnut color or maybe even a dark mahogany. I gotta match the other side. So if you go on my Instagram and my Facebook, you can see the progress so far. One side is done, the other side is getting done right now and these are for that other side, so we have a lot more work to do. All right guys, like I said, thanks for watching and thanks for joining me in my shop. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys next time.